Good morning everyone, welcome to our writing lesson based on poetry. The ally today is to use different poetic devices. We have actually covered poetic devices now for the last two weeks. So everyone, hopefully, I can see by the work that's been sent in, everyone now is more comfortable, confident and knowledgeable about things like metaphors, similes, onomatopoeia, repetition and alliteration. Before we start the lesson, I'm going to read out some poems in a moment. So be let's get started. So before we begin, you will need your pencil or your pen and a paper or a book and you are in control of the pause button. Right, let's look at the poems. I've selected three. Two are on screen and I've had one sent to me from Jaden. Um, so I'm going to read this one out. It doesn't appear on the on the screen. Yesterday this appeared, the poem on the left appeared and I forgot that it was Sophie's. So I'm going to read it again. Thump, howl, swoosh, crunch, the thumping of the thunder, thump, thump, thump. The salty water is carried with the wind. Howl, howl, howl. The gulls soar higher and higher than their highest cloud. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. The crunchy sand. Crunch, crunch, crunch. The waves were crushing. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. The thumping of the thunder. Getting louder. Thump, thump, thump. So that's Sophie's poem, which is a more of a traditional style poem. We call it a formal poem. And on the right, Piot has a free verse poem. And you can see that it's free verse because it's, a, it's like a shape poem. And you don't necessarily have to follow any rules if you write a free verse poem. So I'm going to read that now. It's thundering outside. The internet is off. I'm lazy like a sloth. I have nothing to do. Knock, knock. Who is there? Maybe a thundering bear. Or maybe no one is there. Hello, are you there, Mr. Bear? So there you go. So they've both been able to use poetic devices. Some alliteration, similes, repetition, as well as metaphors. Now I'm going to read Jaden's poem. A unidragon arrived last night with slimy wings and silvery legs. He made any sound he could and ate all the eggs. The sniffling of his snout, the flapping of his wings, the shivering of his legs, the sounds of when he sings. The chomping of his teeth, the banging of his belly, the blinking of his eyes, his tail wriggles like jelly. So there you go. Well done to everyone. So people, I can happily say, are using poetic devices very well in their poetry. So well done to you. So let's start the quiz before we look at our work today. You can write the first letter of the word. Descriptive language that paints a picture for the reader is called. Is it personification, alliteration, imagery, or onomatopoeia? Which poetic device is demonstrated below? <clears throat> she stood in the front of the altar, shaking like a freshly caught trout. Is that imagery, metaphor, simile, or exact rhyme? So remember, you can just write the first letter. Number four, which poetic device is demonstrated here? The rock stubbornly refused to move. Is it simile, personification, onomatopoeia, or none of the above? You can just write the first letter in the word. Which poetic device is demonstrated below? Baby, 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 oh! Baby, 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 oh! I think you get the picture. So which is demonstrated below? Is it a couplet, a rhyme scheme, 
Is it a smile? Is it repetition? Let's mark the work now. So we've got four on screen. So number one, descriptive language that paints a picture for the reader is called imagery. Number two, she stood in the front of the altar shaking like a freshly caught trout. Definitely a simile. It's got the word like in it. Number three, the rock stubbornly refused to move. It's a... Um, what did you think it was? It's personification. Now personification, remember, is a type of metaphor. So the rock is not stubborn. That's a human characteristic. So really rocks can't move unless something picks it up and moves it or something kicks it and moves it. So the rock is given human characteristics. And the last one, baby, 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 oh, definitely repetition. How did you do? Did you get all of those correct? Are you now much more confident with recognizing, identifying poetic devices? I have seen in the quizzes that people are sending in that you are doing very well. Right, let's move on to number five. Which poetic device is demonstrated below? Life is a roller coaster. It has its ups and downs. Sometimes the ride is fun. Other times the ride has been scary. So is that a simile, an extended metaphor, a synchue, or hyperbole? So think carefully. Next one. Number six. What is the rhyme scheme of the following poem? These ones are definitely more difficult. Sometimes I'm cold. Sometimes I'm hot. Sometimes I'm old. Sometimes I'm not. So what rhyme scheme is that? We have actually talked about this before. Is it A, B, C, C? Is it A, B, A, A? Is it A, B, A, B? Or is it A, A, B, B? Choose which one you think it is, or you know it is. A style of poetry that does not rhyme is called a quatrain, exact rhyme, free verse, or metaphor. Oops, let's go back to that, sorry. Right, let's mark those. So the rhyme scheme is A, B, A, B. Cold rhymes with old, that's A, hot and not rhyme and that's B. So it's A, B, A, B. A style of poetry that does not rhyme is called free verse. And the last one. It was a bit trickier for you, but life is a roller case that is a metaphor. So therefore, if you read further down, the metaphor, more metaphors, I use so we call it an extended metaphor. That one's very very tricky. So let's move now to the next phase. So we're going to watch a video and like the reading session I'm going to apologize if this plays up I apologize most deeply. Now this is video is about imagery so hopefully this one will work far better than this morning. So it will depend on the connection. sun is setting in the horizon. The evening breeze begins to blow. I climb up my tree into its mighty branches as the stars in the east start to glow. A few leaves fall, swirling in the breeze. They silently dance in my eye as the wind carries them along as the sunlight begins to die. The crickets begin to chirp. Moonlit creatures start to emerge. Some birds fly over the setting sun as the dark blanket of night starts to merge. I feel different, one with nature. Up here in the wind, all wild and free, as if I am connected to the universe. Me, a small leaf hanging from my tree.
Imagery is a poetic device that uses descriptive language to awaken our five senses. Imagery adds specific details to the work, and these details are like brush strokes that add depth and set the tone of the poem, like painting a picture with all available colours. The poet has used specific descriptions to bring their tree to life. The leaves of the tree don't just fall, they swirl and silently dance, Moonlit creatures chirp and camouflage with the dark blanket of night. These specific images show us how the poet connects with nature as if they are a small leaf on a mighty tree. Why do we use imagery? Imagery stimulates the imagination, taking the audience to different places in their mind, helping them to feel, see, hear, smell and taste the world within the poem. Now it's your turn to explore imagery. Think about a tree or natural environment that is special to you. Describe it in as much vivid detail as you can. Try to evoke all the five senses with the imagery you use. What does your tree smell, feel, taste, sound and look like? Well, there you go. Imagery, which lots of people have done great work on already. I can see it in your poetry. Okay, so we're back to the water cycle. You know what this looks like. As you read the words, you should be able to create some images. And lots of people were very good at sending in work where they used words and then created images to go with the words. So as you read, hopefully, if you understand what you're reading, you will have those images in your mind. So the water cycle is a formal poem. It has a certain structure. It has punctuation. It has things like rhyme. It has similes, metaphors, repetition, onomatopoeia. So what is our job to do today? So the ally today is to use poetic devices and or we can use the word techniques. They're essentially the same thing. Right, today we want to really, your work's going to be based on free verse poetry. So it can be any shape you like. It's just about collecting enough information to write on a particular topic or subject. So this is a tornado or whirlwind. And all of the words are used to create the shape of the tornado. So we've got here in a twist, which matches perfectly with a tornado or whirlwind. And then you'd read it from the top and go all the way down. So you have to decide when you do your poem, what is your poem going to be about? So if it's about a penguin, an elephant, then your poem will probably have a penguin or elephant shape. And then you write all the vocabulary that goes with it, all the phrases and specific words. I won't read what's in the poem for now. I'm just going to bring up others. So here we've got the shape of an umbrella. Why is it the shape of an umbrella? Because the title of this poem is to do with rain. And we normally use an umbrella, if we have one, to keep the rain off us. And it's set out very simply rain go away come again another day rain rain go away rain rain you make me sad rain rain you make me mad so we've got a bit of rhyme going in there now with a free verse poem you can choose to follow some normal rules or you can choose to ignore the rules it's going to be completely up to you but the whole idea of this exercise is that you try and use your poetic devices as much as you can. So, you know, including similes, including a one metaphor, including onomatopoeia, if you can do it, including alliteration, including repetition, they will be all part of your writing task today. Because Friday normally is you have a free, a free choice about the type of poem you want to write. So make sure you think about this task. So before we start, here are our poetic techniques. You want to use them in your poem. 
So rhyme if you can, you don't have to. Onomatopoeia, if you can include it, you can. Similes, definitely want to see some similes, even if there's only one. A metaphor, it'd be great to see at least one metaphor in your poem. Alliteration, repetition, those things are going, hopefully, they will appear in your poetry. Okay, so first of all, we're doing a free verse shape poem today. Okay, so if you go back, we can go back quickly, look at the shape. So you can see how it's all set up. And then let's go back to that page. So the planning task is, first of all, when you do your shape poem, number one for the planning is select a theme, subject or topic for your poem. So what's your topic going to be? Is it going to be about emotions? Is it going to be about rain? Is it going to be about a specific animal? It's up to you. Now, once you do that, your theme or subject will help decide what shape your poem will be. Okay? God, that, that's a terrible mistake in there, isn't there? What shape your poem will be? It's not even correct. Apologies. Should be correct. Give your poem a title. And the title should be straightforward. Normally the titles give the readers an idea of what to expect in the poem. Jot down some ideas that you will use in the poem. So think of vocabulary. Once you've decided on your subject or theme, you've got to think of some words that you can use. You want to think of some phrases that you can use. I put here stages. What are you going to have at the beginning of your poem? And how will your poem finish? Now, if you're doing animals, then you're going to be thinking about animal characteristics. You know, what is the animal doing? Where is the animal? Maybe what's the weather like? Are there other characters in your poem? And something else to think about, how will you use punctuation? Because punctuation is important. It controls that rhythm and the pace that we've talked about before. Okay, so think about how you will use punctuation. Right, the important part here is you have, need to try and use as many literary devices as you can in your poem. Use as many as you can, even if you only use one. So for instance, if you use alliteration, you could do, if the topic's rain, you could have the rain roared and rumbled. Now that's useful because rain, roared and rumble all start with the same consonant sound, but also you can tick off metaphor as well because rain does not roar or rumble. That goes with some kind of human characteristic or animal characteristic. So that, that phrase or sentence will tick off alliteration and a metaphor. You might be able to do that in your shape poem. Metaphors, raindrops danced on my head. Well, there you go again. Simple metaphor. Raindrops don't dance, humans dance. So that could be quite an easy metaphor to what we call magpie or copy or replicate. So magpie ideas. Uh, a good, but try and think of your own as well. Onomatopoeia, can you add some onomatopoeic words like whoosh, splish, splash, which would be easy because it's to do with rain and water. So those words fit perfectly into my poem. Number four, can I use repetition? Well, yes, I could. I could repeat a line, rain pouring down, rain pouring down. That simple. Repetition has been covered. Rhyme, rain slowly drizzled down, soaking every tongue. So rhyme is possible. It is, some, for some people, from the work I've read, seem to find rhyme quite easy to do. So it'll be up to you. Can you find words that rhyme and use them in your poem? Number six, similes. Well, I can finish off this one with 
every raindrop was like a clear crystal diamond. And you can see in that simile, I've also got clear and crystal. They both begin with the same consonant sound, which is the letter C. So I would tick off alliteration once again, as well as similes. So remember, this is your own free choice. You do not need to copy some formal style. But the ally is to use poetic devices or techniques. So use as many of these as you can. It will take a bit of planning. So sit down and think first. If you start writing, new ideas might come into your head and then you can change the ones that you have for the new ones. But make a draft copy first. Look at it and we call it editing. Maybe after you've done your draft, you can edit and look to up level your poetry. So once you've done that planning above, you'll do your draft copy. And if you have time, you might be able to do a good copy. Some people are very good at typing on the computer and it does make a big difference to the, the visual impact of the poll. And others who are very good artists and have wonderful handwriting, they do good copies, they illustrate it, and looks wonderful. So do whatever you can. So finally, when you have completed your work and you have a convenient moment, email your work to yr3 at grange.harrow.sch.uk. I look forward, as always, to reading your poetry. It has really made me feel so happy it's made me laugh it's made me smile and it's also made me feel very proud that so many people have been able to produce wonderful poetry using poetic techniques and devices that's the key part have a wonderful day and an enjoyable weekend speak to you next week take care for now bye